Hello, I'm Grace Vandenberg. Thank you for joining me today for my first video on this new channel, designed to be our little corner of the internet, where I can come and give to you the best advice from my first-hand experience as a writer. Covering some of the things most authors might not even think about before writing their first word in their first chapter of their debut novel. First, let me start by introducing myself. Autumn is the time of year when I come alive. If you want to know a secret as to why that is, keep listening. Confession time. True story. Where I lived growing up, we were rather overlooked. Have you ever lived next to a lot of nosy neighbors? I have. Consequently, as a child, I ended up loathing spring and summer, and I could see all those curtain twitchers twitching. I even had a neighbor who lived across the way from my then family home. During winter especially, they even wanted to spy on their neighbors. They thought themselves smart. Sent a parting, they wrapped the curtains around their heads and peered out like little meerkats. Instead of being super cute, they were doing it with a scrutinizing judgmental eye. Purpose? For their filthy tongues to wiggle-waggle. <laughs> In hindsight, all too hysterical today. Not that I suggest for one moment that these nosy parkers and idle gossips didn't partake in the same leisurely pursuit during the dark nights, but it gave me a sense of privacy I didn't have when the nights were brighter. If you'd like to know a second secret, keep listening. Second confession today. <laughs> when I moved to France, it was the first spring and summers I enjoyed immensely. I had true privacy and no one to gossip about my lifestyle and my coming and goings. Not that I partake in anything out of the norm. I lead a nice, gentle-paced, easy-going lifestyle. But honestly, not being spied on felt really good. I must admit, I am a very private person. Just because, as a woman, it's imperative to understand the potential looming dangers out there. I'm all about prevention rather than cure. Makes life much less regrettable. For the first time, I felt I finally had control of my life. That all played its part in helping me develop my confidence. Confidence as a woman, career-driven woman, in my marriage, in my own skin. Comfortable enough to glare at the image reflecting back at me. Each time I look in the mirror and drown out all the voices that ever told me I wasn't good enough. I am and so are you. Start believing that before you even write the first word of your first novel. Trust me. <clears throat> the sincerest advice I can give to you on this topic is if you lack confidence as you board the train, it will show before you get off at your destination, ultimately leading to writer's remorse. And yes, writer's remorse is a real thing. It gave me the confidence to set boundaries with, well, everyone, including myself. Meaning, taking a step back and stop forcing life, career success, money and other elements of existing and allowing the clouds to drift by in the air in their own colliding direction. In fact, life as an author is anything but easy, especially starting out. That's when you realize there's so much more to an author's career than simply typing at your desk and, well, writing. I don't know if this is true in all cases. But my own personal set of circumstances upon the release of my first novel, I received a backlash of immense, incalculable and immeasurable abuse by those I knew in my old life. A very reason why I personally loathed the idea of marketing oneself as a local author. Best advice from what I have learned firsthand along the course of my journey. I refer to my old life by those who I knew growing up and those who weren't good for me, including my family. This is potentially something you might or might not need to look into the depths of your soul to determine if it's something you must emulate in order to have the career success and lifestyle you seek. If you feel that writing is what you were put on this earth to do, as I do, but you have personal anguish holding you back, like negative people, poisonous people, there may be very well a moment in time when you must make a life-changing decision. Choose your writing career and walk away from those who anchor you to the life you are so thrilled with and life you'd like to improve where possible or say goodbye forevermore in a day to the career you lay awake dreaming at night to attain. And like I say, not every person will experience this sort of heartbreaking, soul-destroying experience. 
which is why I think it's crucial to share this to give everyone the optimum opportunity to be prepared before it happens, because it can be earth shattering. Elements that many people might not even factor in when writing a book. In normal circumstances, it's something no person should ever have to face. But I did, and it was what was going to break me and stop me on my journey, fighting for the life I wanted. In reflection, as tough and dark as it all was, I'm so proud of myself and happy. I didn't let naysayers get inside my head and control my existence. But honestly, looking back, I've never seen evil like it. It truly is what murder mystery novels are made of. Let me explain. I said goodbye for very good and very clear reasons to my past life and reinvented myself. Basically, I rebirthed myself and became me. Exactly how I want to be. Not how people with very little education or too few accomplishments and zero drive and ambition tell me what I should be. Like being above my station for daring to write a book. The people, neighbours, locals, who knew me from living in the same small town but never really knew me. Like those you might smile to or say hello to at most as you pass them by coming and going from your home but never conversate with. Sometimes it's good to people watch and determine what lifestyle you'd like for yourself, even if it is a first feel, feels unattainable. Anything is attainable with a lot of work, effort and hard graft. That's why youth is so beautiful. It's a time when you aren't so scared to dream. And that's something you must hold on to for as long as possible. If one person can do it, you can do it too. All it takes is for you to decide upon your objective, learn it and do it and keep doing it, and when you fall, get right back up and attack it with all the ambition that soars through your veins. Next time, knock it down, that door of opportunity, and push your way into the life you deserve. Never take no for an answer, and never give up. It might take years, it might be the toughest thing you'll ever do, but nothing worth having isn't worth breaking for. Becoming an author literally broke me to dust, and that is what I mean by rebirth. Being broken to dust was the darkest experience I've ever endured, but it's in its own special way, it's equally the most beautiful. I've never been the same person since. For that, I'm truly, humbly grateful to whatever invisible forces were at play. I became capable. I became me. We're not all born as a person will become as an adult. Some people must work at it, and that's just fine too. It wasn't the rejection letters that sometimes got me down, or the rudeness or pompousness of certain literary agents. That's something you will definitely come across at least once in your budding career. Don't take it to heart. It comes with the territory. If you'd like to hear a third but outlandish and insane confession about my published author and learn from my experience, keep listening. Confession number three. Is seemingly something written in a cosy murder mystery set in a gossiping little old village that hadn't moved for the times and on every street corner there's an old hag spreading wicked malice on truce for the sheer hell of it. A village with certain a village with curtain twitchers. Lesson in real life as a published author has all come around to my lo love of autumn. How every suggestion, word, reference should mean something specific, represent an idea, moral, principle. My story all began one winter evening, when within the confines of my bedroom, I wrote my first word in the, what would thus become my debut novel five years later. And then one winter morning, I had to send an old-fashioned printed version of my manuscript to a publisher in London. It was the first and last time I ever had to send a hard copy. <laughs> I felt good wrapping it up in the brown paper package and driving to the post office and mailing it. Weeks and weeks later, I received my first acceptance letter confirming I was going to be a published author. The contract came in the mail. There is no earthly word that I could use to accurately describe my joy. Initially, I felt disbelief. Why might you ask? And to answer that question, because I wanted my world to consist of writing books, many books, more and more books, until the day I kicked the bucket, quite simply. 
I wrote in secret for five years. Why, you might ask. Because I knew that living in such a horrible town, that if or when people caught wind of my ambitions and aspirations, there'd be hell to pay. I was prepared from before I wrote my first word. Hell, I was prepared from the second I decided I was going to write my first book. Since 2015, I was called a liar more times than I can count. A liar because people didn't believe I wrote a book. Didn't believe I'd be capable of writing a book. And that included family. Family I knew, family I didn't know. Want to know a funny story? It wasn't so funny when I was living it, but in hindsight, it's a remarkable thing. My estranged brother convinced my father that I had used Photoshop to create my own first publishing contract to convince him I was going to be a published author, when in actuality I was lying. Crazy I know, but oh so bloody true. How people come up with this stripe, I seriously don't know. It took another three years thereafter for me to finally get it. What my mistake was, I needed to stop trying to figure out the whys and the answers these people did what they did and do what they still do. They won't change. That's their choice. I can't change them. All I can change and all you can change is you and your life and lifestyle, the beginning and the end. After that, as my debut novel went on to pre-release, I went to a family's wake and funeral. Family I had never met before. Within three weeks, my first book was about to drop. I was excited, thrilled, overjoyed, and ready to start telling people of my chosen career, something I had been working on for five and a half years, from the day I wrote my first word until the day that book was on the market for sale. Convinced once the book was a tangible entity, people would have to shut up and put up that my life is my own, and they had no right to anything they didn't know. What did the family I never knew have to say? I was a liar. They didn't believe me. Despite stalking Amazon, looking at the pre-order version of my book, one cousin bought the book and said, and I signed it. They only ever read the first two pages. That was enough for her to abuse me and worse, psychoanalyze me. What is worse? She came to my first book launch. I spent a lot of money on refreshments and rented a large room in a library and wanted and worked countless nights on the preparation, and so on. Five years in the making, this was my moment to finally suppress the fear and live in the joy in the moment with those who shared my life. Well, my cousin got drunk. A 57-year-old woman then got drunk at my book signing and began to make a mockery of me and my guests, saying things like, What made me think I could write a book? What made me think anyone would want to read my book? that she didn't like it, that I was delusional for having such an idea, that it was stupid rubbish and I told too much of myself to the point it made her uncomfortable. Despite only reading the first two pages without really knowing what was me and what wasn't, despite a successful multi-millionaire like Quentin Tarantino saying, and I quote, make it personal enough so you feel embarrassed to share it, her daughter, a teacher, read the first page and claimed she didn't want to read anymore because she didn't want to read a book about an abused child. That would be fine, except there were no abused children or children at all in my book. And then proceeded to tell me with absolute certainty that she doesn't actually have, that I was raped, but I don't remember it, but she was telling me I was raped and therefore could have nothing more to do with me. And because I was raped, none of the family wanted anything to do with me either. Either way you look at it, that is not fine. Except, one little thing, I was never raped. This is, this is an example how your scenes can be used against you when you write these scenes. People your story isn't about embedding themselves in your success. People like that are in no position to diagnose people and refuse to listen to the fact that when they do this, they're playing with fire, which could ultimately lead to a person's demise. Or shit, my first book launched in 2015. From that, I received an onslaught of abuse, in-person humiliation, slurs, debasing, online attacks, death threats.
One step further, I wasn't as savvy on social media back then as I am today. But before getting published, I never had a social media account on my, any platform. I only opened my first social media because of a clause in my publishing contract. Yes, I was a latecomer and proud because I didn't like the idea of living my life online among strangers and I was only too well aware that one day all the naysayers would weaponize the platform. I wasn't disappointed. And besides, I have always been a much more private person because of the childhood snoops and town liars. I think it's safe to say we've probably all known one or two of them in our lifetime. I, however, have known more than I can count and care to remember. But each story is different, and this just happens to be my story, and one I truly hope never happens to any of you, not even remotely. All I was guilty of was two things, writing a book and existing. Coming savvy on social media, I had my Facebook account hacked and a very false piece of information posted announcing my own death, my own death and location of burial. And that was in 2015. And needless to say, my whole first experience as a published author was an utter and absolute nightmare. Not because of the mechanisms within the publishing industry per se, but because of those in your local town that you grew up with, that knew you but not really knew you. Well, when they're not pleased, they can rain a thunderstorm over you and your life and it proved extremely difficult to try and survive. So the shift I refer to is, I rebirthed myself, I decided who I wanted to be, learned the mechanisms as to how I was gonna need to get there and I mastered them, and bit by bit, I became a professional, and I learned who was the most important people in this career, and it wasn't the locals, and it wasn't the naysayers, it was the professionals, the professionals that I would ultimately work with, the agents, the editors, and the publishers. It is their job to give you professional critique and criticism. That's their job. That is what they are there to design to do. The process of rejection letters might frustrate you, but get used to it. It happens to us all. Can't get into this game and not expect a little suffering. But it will never dishearten you, brutalize you, metaphorically slaughter you. Most replies won't tell you very much. Perhaps it might sound like this. No, not for me. I liked it, but... And then one day your dreams will come true, so long as you stick to the hard graft and one day you may be surprised when you get a yes and a contract of representation. And that's the day that you will work for, from the day you write your first word on the first chapter of your debut novel. So guys, I will be back next week and I hope you can join me for all of the lessons that go into actually becoming a published author all the pitfalls, and all the exciting success to follow. So let me ask you one question as your homework until next week. Are you going to be a nicer? Are you going to be a doer? Thank you for joining me, Grace Vandenberg.